Hi. So my talk, hey Dave, heckler already, that's not a good start. Um, my talk is called How to Sing with Others Even If You Can't Sing on Your Own. And I have spotted in the audience someone who I sing with on a weekly basis. Um, so I better get this right. So it became apparent fairly on in my life that I was never going to front a band. Like many teenagers, I went to loads of gigs. And like many of you, perhaps, I had fleeting daydreams of what it might be like to be a lead singer in a band. But while reasons of practicality and a supreme lack of talent didn't seem to stop others, I realized early on that this was never going to be a sensible career choice. So I resigned myself to a career on the other side of the microphone, first working as a concert promoter and then later as a graphic artist for various music-related clients. And to say that singing was an itch that always needed scratching would be a lie. I've been very happy backstage. But fast forward to September 2013, and I wanted to try something new. To quote that overused cliche, I wanted to do something that was outside my comfort zone. I narrowed it down to two things, joining a Pilates class or joining a choir. A choir? <laughs> joining a choir. And a friend had mentioned a choir in Cambridge, which is where I live, uh, the previous winter, but it wasn't the right time. So I did a little research, and I knew that I didn't want to join a traditional choral choir. I didn't want to sing sacred music, and I definitely, definitely didn't want to join a choir that was made up of well-meaning white people singing traditional African songs. Not that there's anything wrong with any of those things, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. So the choir that my friend had mentioned was called the Dowsing Sound Collective, and it was a choir made up of people who could sing well, and people who perhaps couldn't sing quite so well. But more importantly, for me, the repertoire was right up my street. Elbow, The Divine Comedy, Magnetic Fields, Temper Trap, Rufus Wainwright, Jose Gonzalez. This was the repertoire that we were singing in our choir, amongst many others. So why sing with other people? I asked some of the people in my choir this question, and one answer specifically struck a chord. And I quote, it's a place to hide, which then gives you the confidence to go for it. Even if you're not perfect, the occasional mistake shouldn't stand out too much. Stacey Horn, author of Imperfect Harmony, Finding Happiness Singing with Others, says, group singing and performance can produce satisfying and therapeutic sensations, even if the sound produced by the vocal instrument is of mediocre quality. And that's me, the mediocre vocal instrument, happily buried within the group. Not being the greatest singer may work in our favour, though. There was a study, Does Singing Promote Wellbeing, which found that amateur singers experienced a heightened sense of joy and well-being following singing lessons and rehearsals, whereas professional singers did not. When singing is not your profession, you can just sing for the joy of it. One singer in the study said, I live my life the way I sing, going back and forth between the first and second soprano vocal parts. Sometimes I do what I can to make sure my voice stands out on top, like a first soprano. But more often I go for the middle, where my voice is one of many. This is where I prefer to be. Maybe it's not such a good idea professionally, but like singing, it's a lot more fun in the middle. You don't feel the harmony as much on top and the harmonies are the best part, both in life and in singing. And harmony is something that I've appreciated from a very young age. The house where I grew up in Cambridge was at the other end of the street from the world-renowned Cambridge Folk Festival. And when I was a kid, uh, a bunch of us used to jump the fence and uh, kind of sneak around the back and listen to all these incredible folk acts. And Christy Moore uh, was one in particular that uh, I always kind of remember. And folk musicians, particularly traditional folk groups, such as Fairport Convention, the Watersons, and Pentangle, are all about the harmonies. And while I didn't always like the songs or the performances, I was always very turned on to the harmony, something that would stand me in good stead years later when it came to singing in the choir, when sometimes we're singing 16 parts. The idea that we're not very good at something is a foreign concept when you look at human beings as a species. You hear people say, I'm not very good, I'm only average, I'm just an amateur. In French, 
Amateur simply means lover of. So someone who speaks French once told me. For most of human history, people sang together and it wasn't seen as a competition or a contest or any kind of judgment as to who was better or who was worse. It was simply a joyful communal experience. Of course, some people are better singers than others. But historically, there was very little emphasis given to any of this. Still today, throughout most cultures, singing is not seen in a competitive light. And it's only in the last 500 years or so that we've had concert halls, which are set up to separate the performer from the audience, a separation that didn't really exist in human history before this time. Now we pay experts to go up on stage and sing to us, because apparently they're better at it than we are. Scientists have found that singing has a number of health benefits. Researchers in Gothenburg prove that by singing, we can train our lungs to breathe more efficiently. And singing has also been shown to boost our immune system, reduce stress levels. And according to a report published in the Journal of Music Therapy in 2004, helps patients cope with chronic pain. A, a joint study by Harvard and Yale universities in 2008 went one step further, claiming that choral singing in Connecticut, in a town in Connecticut, sorry, had increased residents' life expectancy. Singing has been used as music therapy in hospitals, care homes, and hospices, hospices for decades. It enables people with dementia to access memory, memories and joy in times when communication is faltering. So says Sarah Teagle, who's the co-founder of the Forget Me Not Chorus, which is a charity uh, that works with dementia sufferers. Here are some quotes from my choir about why they sing. It stretches my aging brain cells to shed some of that mortifying school choir leftover crap because I'm really bad at listening to new music and it forces me out of my hidey hole. And my favourite, because it's as near as I'm ever going to get to being part of the Von Trapp family singers. <laughs> Thank you.